Well, most of the research stories we bring you here on Feedback TV are about MLA's use of producer levies and matched federal funding to find ways to improve the producer's bottom line. But one of MLA's lesser known roles involves managing projects that benefit the livestock industry without drawing on producer levies. Jane Drinkwater visited Casino in northern New South Wales to learn how one of these programs is helping to put meat processors on a more secure footing with flow-on benefits for producers. Australia's meat processing plants struggle with attracting and retaining skilled labour, particularly for duties requiring sustained physical effort. Typically, by age 40, those performing the most physically draining tasks tend to leave the industry to find less strenuous work elsewhere. Obviously, we have an ageing workforce like most of the Australian industry, and we have to find some way of reducing the strain on our, our employees to improve their longevity in the tasks of boning. And one of the limiting factors we found there was just the strenuous nature of their job. So their mind was still good, their skills were still good, their knife craftsmanship was still good, but they just didn't have the physical capacity to do the work anymore. And we set about finding a mechanism to solve that problem. That solution, in the form of a mechanical or robotic arm which manually assists boners to pull meat and bone from the carcass, is now up and running. Our employees will openly tell you it's probably one of the best pieces of equipment we've ever designed. We used to use a lot of our strength of our arms and back and shoulders and that, and used to go actually home sore. And now you've got the new machine, it takes all that pulling out, where you just actually just guide your knife down through the bone now. So the actual machine does the work. I'm pretty happy with it. It's made my, made my life a lot easier. The arms movement is controlled by a hand grip and lever, which the operator uses to manoeuvre the hook into position, then direct the arm to push downwards, pulling the meat or bone away from the carcass. The more pressure you put on it, the stronger it gets. So it actually does all the pulling and dragging down for you. And it allows the boner to concentrate on the seam and releasing the meat from the bone. All he does is effectively lean on it and control a lever that either lifts the machine up or lowers it down and it pivots in three locations to reduce any further strain on our operators. Reduced fatigue and improved meat removal is leading to productivity gains. It's removed a lot of the soft tissue damage that was associated with the task. It's stopped the sprains and strains we previously had for filling this role. So from an occupational health and safety perspective, it's been a major win. From a yield perspective, the right piece of meat on the right muscle is now achievable for the full eight hours our employees work. Yes, it's, it's definitely increased the yield. All the meat's left on the actual product now, not on the bone. The gains in terms of increased throughput, reduced muscle strain and improved yield are sizeable. This technology is estimated to reduce processing costs by more than $5 a carcass, resulting in productivity gains of almost $1.4 million per year. And eliminating the effort required to perform these tasks means boning staff can continue to work until retirement age. The skill in our tradesmen is something that you cannot replace easily. If they are able to work till they're 65, that's great for us and it's great for them. So we look at it as a very positive opportunity. The new technology will also allow people of either gender and any build to work as boners. I suppose the one thing that I'd say about this particular piece of equipment is it's been designed in such a way that it actually opens up the opportunity to a far greater cross-section of individuals from the the most heavily built, most solid person right down to the slightest built person because there's no physical effort required in achieving the task. And we'll see a different demographic of employee in the future, which at the end of the day makes a sustainable industry. With a greater recovery of saleable beef and a reduction in health and safety incidents, there's no doubt this new technology benefits the meat processing industry, but is there also a benefit for beef producers? As Northern Cooperative Meat Company is a producer-owned co-op, the improved bottom line of the processing plant directly benefits its 1,500 producer shareholders. But what about the wider industry? If our industry is more viable, ultimately our primary producers will be more viable. The MLA donor company mechanism meant MLA worked closely with the commercial partners involved, guiding and steering the project. But funding came from the federal government, the processing plant and the product commercialiser. 
And here is a very good example of where we've been able to take a processor's investment, a solution provider's investment, match that with R&D federal government money and develop a solution for the processing sector which benefits the whole industry. And that benefit should be felt well into the future as other processing plants adopt the innovation and the livestock industry finds additional ways to use this technology.